Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Mindy Egan and in today's video I have kind of a non-traditional Valentine's card to share with you today. Although this could be used at any time of the year. I'm taking a new look at my stencils that I have in collection starting with this bubble background. So I was actually inspired by a crafty friend to try this. Now the bubble background stencil is a two layer stencil. I'm starting with just one of the layers. I always make sure that my Lawn Fawn logo is in the bottom of my stencil and I'm holding the stencil in place with some post-it tape. I'm just working on a silicone mat to hold my cardstock down. And then I'm ink blending number two pencil ink from Lawn Fawn. This is a darker shade of yellow and I'm working on sunflower cardstock. After I removed that first layer of the bubble stencil, I am bringing in the second one. I just made sure that my Lawn Fawn logo was in the bottom as always and then just kind of overlapped the bubbles and brought that number two pencil ink in again. Now I'm wiping off my stencil, leaving that last layer in place and I'm bringing in fairy dust stencil paste, which is my absolute favorite. I need to stock up on this. It's just a beautiful glittery stencil paste. I'm spreading this all across my background, not putting too much of a thick layer to it. The more you put on, the longer it's going to take to dry. So after I scrape that off, I'm gonna carefully remove this. I'm gonna wash my stencil off in the sink with some warm water and soap and let my background dry. I'm stamping out images for my card front so I have the jar from How You Bean and this little jumping mouse from You Autumn Know. Stamping that on 80 pound white cardstock with the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. And then I'm bringing in the conversation hearts and adding that right into the center of my jar. The conversation hearts you could color in with any color medium that you have, but there's this solid heart image that is on the conversation hearts add-on stamp set. So I am going to stamp all of the hearts that are in the background with sunflower ink, and then I'm going to stamp the ones that are in the forefront with number two pencil. Now there is a little bit of overlap, but once the ink dries, you really can't see that overlap. Then I'll come in and color up my jar and my mouse using my Copic markers. As always, I will have my Copic markers listed at the top of the screen. So the top of my jar, I have N6, N4, and N2. I'm keeping the highlight area in the center, so that is going to be my light lightest marker. And the same thing for the jar. I'm just adding a very, very light blue hue around the edges. I'm leaving kind of the center more of a white, so my blue is going to fade off into that white of the jar. For my mouse, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to keep kind of a highlight area in the center of the mouse, so I added my darkest color, which is the E44, to each side of the mouse and then blended those together. So I have E44, E43, and E42. I'm going to give it a light belly, so I have E53 and E50. I also used that E50 or 53 for the ears and then R22 for the nose and some rosy cheeks. Then I just die cut these out. I'll set it off on the side to work on my sentiment. I'm using this grateful, which is from the Scripty Autumn Sentiments that I'm stamping in jet black ink onto the 80 pound white cardstock. And I'm gonna use the coordinating die to cut that out. I love having a little banner for kind of a sub sentiment. So I die cut out the sentiment banner from Chili Pepper cardstock. I'm prepping this with my anti-static powder tool and then I'm inking up this smaller sentiment, which is also off of the uh, Scripty Autumn Sentiments, and I'm stamping that in the Yeti ink. So it's a white pigment ink. I'm gonna hold that banner with my tweezers and sprinkle on white embossing powder, which if you've watched my videos before, it's my favorite way to do white heat embossing. I have such a great impression. And then I'm melting that with my heat tool, also holding it with my tweezers to protect my fingers. My panel is nice and dry, so I'm going to die cut this out with a stitched rectangle border. And now I'm working on my base, and I love doing this in my Misty because it helps me be able to get an even margin around my cardstock. So I have chili pepper as my base, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. I have a piece of white cardstock. You could see I used that scrap piece that I die cut out my sentiment from, and then adding on my stenciled background. I really wanted to create kind of the look of cheese to go with my mouse and those hearts. So that's kind of the concept that I have going here is those bubbles in the background, the bubble background I used. Um, I wanted it to look like a cheese background. And then 
That's why I did the hearts in yellow is to look like little hearts of cheese, just kind of a cute twist to everything. So I added my grateful die cut word with liquid glue, popped up my sentiment banner. I'm also popping up my little jar. Now this one I struggled with as far as putting on my card. I was going to put it directly in the center, but it just didn't look right and my mouse was going to be hanging off at the edge. I originally wanted the mouse on the top, but that was sticking up too high. So I thought it was really cute to kind of tilt my jar. And then I'm adding my mouse with a little bit of foam squares on one side and then a little bit of liquid glue that's going to overlap my jar. Then I'm going to add a few little highlights to the hearts that are in the jar and also a couple highlights to the top of the jar as well. You can't really see it if I add it to the blue in the jar, so just the top of the jar works well. So I hope this has inspired you to take another look at your stencils and see what else you can get out of them. The bubble background just makes a really great cheese background. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you again soon.